How would you like to make my coffee for me this morning? A coffee. I'm a fan of cold brew, so I squirt a little simple syrup in a mason jar glass, then a little coconut milk or soy milk if we're out, then about half a glass of coffee concentrate followed by some cold water. I prefer ice, actually, but we're short on freezer space at the moment. So would you mind doing that? That's what Where the Goats Are asks you to do. Inhabit the life of Tikva for a while and help with her chores. Tikva works a dairy. She has goats to milk and feed, and she has a cheese business that keeps her afloat enough that she can feed herself and her livestock. She, and by extension you, only have a few chores to keep track of. And if you're bored, you could always drag a stick around. That's a hoot. You receive letters from family members who have chosen city life over a simple life in the middle of the desert. The letters start hopeful and joyous because the new locale has afforded them greater opportunities. But over time, they notice changes in their metropolises. People are getting sick and fearful. Some sort of apocalyptic event is destroying life in these cities, and it's spreading fast, presumably due to the concentrated population. The letters begin to warn Tikva of the coming plague. It takes everything. It takes everything. When it reaches your farm, Tikva, please pray for... But she's content in her everyday routine, and she likely won't leave. I, I honestly can't say much else about the story without spoiling it. In fact, I've probably said too much already. But to be honest, it's not the story that will drive you to continue this game. The story isn't really about you. It's happening far away, and the news is delivered via letters that you don't have to read. The beauty of this game is its use of routine as a form of intimacy. You milk the goats, you make the cheese, you water the plant, you enjoy a nice conversation with a local trader, maybe you enjoy a letter from your family, and then it's off to bed. You wake up, you repeat. Now, if I'm honest, most people will probably think this game boring, because it's repetitive and simple. But what is Halo, the bastion of 30 seconds of fun, if not repetitive and simple? You shoot the guys, you grab the loot, you run a little further, and you repeat. The big differences between Halo and where the goats are, are the length of the game loop and the activities you enjoy. Well, that and the casual violence against an alien planet. Now, Halo espouse never-ending fun. And I say, f*** fun. How about never-ending satisfaction at a job well done? How about an infinite loop of small, satisfying chores while I sip my coffee? Uh, thanks for making it, by the way. It's delicious. And consider the life that Tikva has. Her existence in this Dust Bowl is beautiful for her. And we get to experience it for a short period of time. Enjoy that. I've said as much as can be said about where the goats are. It's a quick game, and it makes for a sturdy proof of concept. But let's talk about its successor now, The Stillness of the Wind. This isn't a sequel, just a game that exists with the same motifs of where the goats are. It's more like an expansion, one that's more refined. The mechanics are more reliable, there are more activities to engage in, gathering mushrooms, planting crops, shooting gun. There's more interactivity in the mechanics from the original. Milking requires timed clicks. Making cheese requires that you swirl your mouse around like you're mixing milk. And while I cursed, initially, the new requirements of play, it's harder to take notes and drink my coffee. I did get engaged in gameplay more quickly. Talma, the farmer in this one, became infinitely more interesting than Tikva because I was participating in the process more. I'd wake up in the morning and head to the well, the goats weren't ready for milking anyway, and with the water I'd retrieved, I would take care of the plants and gather ripened crops. Then it was off to milk the goats, and not without giving them some love. Next, I'd pour the milk into the cauldron and start the cheese making process. At some point, the trader would show up and we'd have a few words, share a few stories, and I'd trade cheese for some hay or whatever wares might have looked good. If I had time, I'd go off to a landmark to gather mushrooms, or I'd drag a stick around the yard for funsies. Once it got dark, I'd gather the eggs from the chicken coop and head into the house, being sure to close the goat's pen if I'd left it open. These activities made me feel closer to Talma, made me care about her and her goats, but it was the expansion of the story that made me feel like I knew Talma. See, in the stillness of the wind, you aren't just focused on what's happening in the moment, right now. Talma is old friends with the trader, and he remembers things with her, gives her advice, and explains what's happening in the cities that he visits. The letters that are sent to you this time around speak of the past and meetings between old friends. They talk about regrets, and on occasion, the future. They include gifts to show how much they care for Talma. There are landmarks nearby where Talma can find mushrooms to be gathered, and those landmarks also serve as places where Talma can remember the life that she's lived. 
There are old toys laying about as well. Picking them up provides a bit of lucid remembrance of an encounter Talma had in relation to the toy. There are story bits that are all over the place, and unlike where the goats are, it's pretty difficult to avoid them. I mean, you probably could, but they're charming, and they're quick to read, and Talma is such a wonderful soul, so why skip them, you fucking monster? Just as a quick hint, time doesn't stop when you pause the game or open a letter during the day. The best time to read letters is at night, since time doesn't progress at that point. You can't do any chores anyway. I usually took the night time to read letters, to read books, and eat a hearty supper before I went to bed. As a nighttime routine, that worked best for me since I wanted to read as much as I could, but didn't have time during the day. And there's nothing more endearing than starting to read a book when, about halfway through, Thomas starts snoring. In the stillness of the wind, the routine will keep you going, and the story will keep you interested. Without the story, I think the game is engaging enough, but it would probably get boring over time. Playing where the goats are in the stillness of the wind is a practice in focus. You aren't going to find your daily doses of dopamine playing. It's satisfying, it's contemplative, it's calming. It's a calming experience meant to keep you in the present. In summation, Tikva and Talma are heartwarming characters. Participating in their routines was dreamy and quieting. I loved being on that farm. I miss nature. Get the fuck out of the city. Get the fuck out of the city.